you know, we've been expecting a lot more volatility this year. And, and the reason for that was really tighter global monetary policy conditions globally, with central banks globally shrinking balance sheets in aggregate, uh, and the Fed raising rates. This really should not come as too much of a surprise. Uh, our target for the S&P 500 was 2805. We revised that down in March uh, after that brief bounce. A and again, we had a number of concerns, including the effect of developed market rates on emerging market growth, which drives global growth. Uh, we had more recent concerns about Europe, uh, U.S. housing, and we just came out with a piece yesterday uh, on U.S. corporate credit and how many aspects of the credit markets, including commercial industrial lending, are really at extremes, uh, even for this time in the cycle. Just to just mention, uh, we are pretty close to the session lows, Dow down 3 percent, as is the S&P 500 down 3.2, and it's just around that 2,700 mark, Pete. Um, you know, you've also been focusing on the possibility of uh, volatility in the bond market as as kind of a trigger for some of this stuff going on in equities. How would you describe what is happening right now as investors in all asset classes try and gear up for uh, for maybe what 2019 has to throw at us? Yeah, well, well, of course, uh, you know, we can talk about the, the risk free bond markets and, and the rates markets. And, and that's something we've been talking about pretty much all year as well. Our expectation was for a flatter yield curve. Obviously, we have the first inversion of the year yesterday from threes to fives. Twos to tens is approaching flat as well at, I think, about 10 to 15 basis points right now. And that's really more of a reflection, in my view, of the fact that we have very slow global growth and that long rates have been anchored globally by central banks uh, whilst the Fed has been raising rates here. And that, of course, leads us to the, the corporate credit markets, which, uh, again, have lent support for some time to equities because leverage has continued to climb. And obviously, as financial markets remain liquid, that supports equities um, in the meantime. And that is slowly starting to go away, in my view, as we've, for the first time, for example, seen high yield volatility pick up. Uh, that has not been the case until very recently. Peter, what is going on with small caps right now? You got the Russell 2000 down 4% again today. If you're concerned about trade, if you're concerned about global growth slowing down, I mean, the U.S. in terms of, in terms of economic activity is still very strong, still in many ways the best house on the block. Why is there so much weakness when you look at those particular stocks? Right. Well, the, the small cap narrative early in the year was clearly that you should buy U.S. small caps as a, uh, a protection or a hedge against uh, the trade war that was that was burgeoning at the time. I was never really a buyer of that narrative, really because I felt the credit markets were starting to tighten up a little bit. And small cap stocks are particularly sensitive to the credit markets, especially when you see a move in LIBOR the way we've seen it, which, again, is both on Fed policy, but it's also on the fact that we're going to see a continued uh, bill issuance especially into early next year. And, and smaller companies tend to be more dependent on bank financing than on the corporate bond market. So I think that concern around, concern around the sensitivity to concerns and credit are, is really what's driving small cap action. Peter, I'm going to ask you just a real broad brush question. It's still a bull market. I mean, you can look at the, the structure of this year's action. You see two all-time highs, kind of a double top looking uh, setup in, uh, in the S&P 500. Haven't been able to really capture a lot of benefit from great earnings growth and huge buybacks and all the rest of it. Uh, and we've had this rolling bear market. So where do you think the market's ultimately situated? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, we've been we've been very late cycle. That was our call early in the year. That's exactly where I think we are. I think it's a little bit too early to call the end of the bull market, but we're certainly very, very close. It's certainly a sell the rally market. That's been our position. I think we've made the high for the highs for the year. Certainly there's not much of a year left, but I think 19 probably brings uh, uh, only really downside from here. So I guess all that being said, I think it probably is very close to the end of the bull market.